In this video series, we're going to cover turning in files and converting vector graphics to raster with extreme precision. If you don't even know what any of that means yet, don't worry, you soon will. Please don't wing this. Even if you think you know where I'm going in any of those videos, I can tell you from experience, you probably don't because very often students turn these in the first time they do them incorrectly. So if you were assigned this video for a preparation grade, it's important that you watch the video and turn in an Illustrator file that contains two artboards as will be explained later on. The first thing I suggest you do is go out to your desktop or some place where you, you can't lose sight of it, right click, new folder, and just name that folder something like turn into Steve. And once you've created your folder, go ahead and open your project that you're going to turn in in Illustrator. If you don't already have a backup copy of this file, save it one last time and then go ahead and do a file save as and you're always going to turn in files to me in this format. So if your name was Jane Doe, it would be Doe underscore and Jane underscore and then a description of what the project is followed by the file extension. Please do not turn in folders to me unless I specifically ask for folders. The reason I have you start with your last name is it keeps everything in order um, in the way that I grade them and it works out perfect. And the reason we're being careful about making a new version of this folder is that we're about to make some what could be considered destructive changes to it. So it's important that we have a backup and this new version. Okay, so found the folder here on the desktop. And then for this demo, I'm going to pretend that I am Jane Doe. And then for the description, just keep it really short. Like in this case, this would be short for Alaska poster. And go ahead and save that. Next, we're going to clean up the document and to make sure we can access everything. We want to make sure that all layers are unlocked, sublayers are unlocked. Now let's make sure, uh, other than discrepancies of different versions, that our interface looks as much the same as possible. So go over here to the workspace and make sure that you are on Essentials. And then go one more time and go Reset Essentials. And we want to make sure all our layers are unlocked, so we're going to Layers. An easy way to do that is use this little drop-down menu for the layers and go to unlock all layers. If it's grayed out, it probably means you have no locked layers. Now we could also have a item locked, just like one or more items locked, but not on the main level of the layers. And the easiest way to unlock those is just go over to object and unlock all. If it's grayed out, it means you don't have anything. If it's not, like in my case, I'll select it and then anything that I had locked all of a sudden becomes available available to move or select. And that's exactly what we want to do is fi uh, figure out what stuff we don't need here and start to get rid of it. And we just want to be a little bit careful that we don't accidentally, like say, draw a marquee around this stuff to get rid of it and accidentally reach into our other artboard that we want to keep. So Command Z that and I'm just going to get rid of the stuff that I don't need. and then go to the artboard tool and start clicking on and deleting the artboards that I don't need. So now I have a clean document. This is an important one for grades. If this is, if this and only if this is the first time you have been assigned this video, type the word test near the top left corner of your artboard. So simply grab the text tool, click near the top left, type in test. If it's really small like that, because I want to be able to see it, just click on it, put your cursor over one of the corners, 
assuming you've got the direct or the regular selection tool, put your cursor over one of the corners, hold down the shift key and drag or otherwise use the properties to manipulate the, the size and what is that approximately like? Well, I guess it depends, but you get the idea. Make it make the, the word test visible. You'll see why that's important in a second. Now, the next thing that we want to do is embed any images that we have in the document. And here's the steps if you like to see it in writing. So we go up to Window, Links, and we'll see a line in here for every image that we have. I only have one. We want to select all of the images that we have in here. So if we had multiples, we'd click on the first one, move down, shift click on the last one, go to this drop down and select embed. And notice the difference between how this looks before and after embedding. So here's before, here's after. You get this little icon in here that lets you know that the image has been embedded. Okay, now just a quick educational note on what you've just done by embedding the image. The image is now part of the Illustrator file. So if you just save the Illustrator file, the image would be there, which may seem like a good thing, but in most cases it's not because what it does is it adds to the file size of the Illustrator file. So in other words, you have this larger Illustrator file, plus you still have the original image taking up space. So this is really only advisable when you're sharing an image with someone who's not working in the, the best practices that you are, which is having the separate Illustrator file and the image file, um, you know, such as turning in work to an instructor. Because otherwise, the other way is much better. Imagine now if you made 10 copies of this file to try different variations or that was all contained for, for different reasons, whatever it is, you would have huge amounts of extra file because of the embedded image. So now we got out, that out of the way, now let's make a copy of this image and the artboard. So the way that we do that is we just simply move into artboard mode by clicking on the artboard tool here. And then we're going to act like we just want to move the artboard. That's not what we want, so I'll Command Z that. We're just going to click and drag, but we're going to hold down the Option key. And when I release the mouse and then the Option key, I now have a copy of the artboard and the contents that are on it. Now, if you did not get the contents with the artboard, try it again and then look over in properties and make sure that this has a check mark in it. Move artwork with artboard that will also copy artwork with artboard. Now only if this is your first time you are also going to take the word test and make a copy of it. Same principle but now we're out of artboard mode. How did I get out of artboard mode? I just simply went over here to the selection tool, clicked on it and you can see now we're back in normal mode. Then we're going to go over to this word test that we made. We're going to click and drag, hold down the option key, and make a copy. The next step that we're going to do is write outlined above the new artboard that we just created. So I'm going to grab the hand tool over here by clicking in this area and selecting it. Let's move this a little bit. And then grabbing the text tool and typing outline. Change the size of that a little bit. This time I'll do it over here. Okay, then our next step is to actually outline the text only on one of these. And which one? The one that's labeled outline. So I'm going to select everything on this artboard. Just drag, drag a marquee click and drag with the selection tool from the bottom up. I don't need to outline the word outlined. And then if and only if this is your first time and you have the word test here, then I can shift click to select that as well. So everything on this artboard, including my test, is selected. And then to outline the text, I go up to type and create outlines. Now what just happened here is that and I'll, I'll use Alaska as an example. Over here, if we look in properties, we can see this is the typeface, have it on the default type Myriad Pro, but when I click over here, 
not type anymore. It's now a shape. So what we've done is taking away the chance that the user that we're sending this to, in this case, your instructor, if they don't have the typeface or typefaces that you used over here, they have a backup where no matter what, they would be able to print and look at exactly the work that you did outline. Now this is also a, a very bad thing to do um, to your document because the text is no longer editable. So if you misspelled Alaska, we couldn't just go in here and type on it. Um, we couldn't adjust the kerning, anything like that that you can do with type. You can only do over here what you can do with basic shapes. So that's why we have two versions. Okay, so we've done this, this, this. Let's verify. So, as I said before, when you select the text and you see a font over here, as opposed to just the shape options, that's one way to know that it's outlined. Also, you can see there is a line here under the type, which is known as the baseline, doesn't exist over here. Make sure you check through all the document. Another way that you can tell is that when it's a font, it's a, um, it's a looser selection. Here's a really good example. You see how tight it is around here. We're here. It's much looser because it includes the baseline. Absolute best way to test this, and if you're concerned about your grade, I would do this. Take the file and that file only and open it up on another computer and then what you're going to do is you're going to look for an error message that might come up saying can't find the image. If that happens, you, you didn't do it correct. And then you're going to go over to the outlined one when you open it on the new computer. And you're going to look and, and make sure that all of your text is indeed outlined. Uh, very important though that you get this concept is you only want to grab that file and that file only to bring over to the other computer that you haven't been working on. Because if you take your whole folder and you pull it from, say, your thumb drive and your image is sitting in the same folder, it may just be smart enough to find it. So what I would do, plug your thumb drive into another computer, take this file, drag it onto the desktop, and then test it like that. And then in the next videos, we'll start going over converting your vector graphics into raster images.